So I think I, I think in the note uh, I said repeated most of what I said before, um, and I said so this is what we are doing. And next time I'll have a video to actually post for future classes. Um, so with that, let me get started here. Let me do multiple choice first, um, and then. Um, and I and then I think we'll have enough time to do one uh, free form question with all the time that I anticipate needing to organize the works and all that. So as I've said before, the ten minutes of time it is a tight amount of time. It's meant to be a tight amount of time. Um, I, uh, <laughs> so when people reach out to me, oh, that's not enough time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you know when I do it, I I also have to make sure I don't. Uh, tarry too long. I have to go through it quickly because um, so I'll try to explain some of the things if I feel like I have the time, but uh, I'll have to <laughs> make sure I don't uh, slow down too much. Um, and actually, I'm gonna so I, I'm just having Sage Math ready in case uh, I need to plug in numbers. I think most of the questions will give you physical constants, and I think I actually have a Coulomb constant finally memorized. Uh, 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 in the basic SI unit. So when that comes up, I'm going to program that in, and then we'll get started. So it's going to define. This is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 in SI unit. OK, so it's 623. Let's start. So same rules as before. Says, choose the correct statement regarding interaction between electric charges. Uh, I guess we gotta go through chart. Opposite sign attract and like sign repel. Okay, that seems correct. Let me just double check the rest. Uh, force between electric charges. Yeah, that's nonsense. <laughs> Words are solid, <laughs> is what I say. Uh, electric charges repel each other when they come in contact with each other. Um, no, because they act at a distance. It's a inverse square law. Try the opposite sign. That's the exact opposite of that, and that's incorrect. That's not how it works. Um, the Coulomb's law belongs in the group of laws, in, yeah, inverse square law. What it means is the magnitude of the force, or whatever it is you're looking at, is proportional to inverse or reciprocal of the square of the distance. Um, so uh, energy has nothing to do with that. Strength, okay. Interaction inverse the proper square, uh, not duration, it's distance. Uh, so inverse point square, the uh, distance, there it is. Okay. Um, even though electric and gravitational forces are fundamental forces in nature, okay, we're often not aware, we are not often aware of electric forces or gravitational forces, okay. Uh, choose the incorrect explanation. Okay, so I gotta be careful. If it's correct, it's not the correct answer. Uh, gravitational force is exceedingly weak and can only have significant effect on a very yeah astronomical. Okay, that seems correct, so that's not the answer. Electric force is experienced uh, by uh, most matters made up. Uh, so this is kind of the thing where uh, the second half of the statement is incorrect, and that makes the whole thing incorrect. <laughs> that's how logic works. <laughs> Let me check the rest because it is positive negative charges. Most, yeah, most objects are electrically neutral, although they contain, you know, protons and electrons that are electrically charged. Yeah. Any long range interactions cannot be directly felt. Yeah, this is a thing that I uh, feel like needs emphasis in physics 4A. The only forces you feel are contact forces, not gravity. Just um, a lot of people have intuition about gravity based on the feeling gravity, but you only feel contact. Forces. Okay, once your picture below, flux through our uh, flux. It sounds like it's gonna be a Gauss's law question. So uh, maybe I should have, you know, let me not waste time writing down Gauss's law if I don't need it. Outside around the neutral charge is to be placed here, which statement most correctly states the charge changes in the flux through the spherical surface. Okay, now based on my, no, okay, I'm gonna write down Gauss's law. Based on what I know about Gauss's law, that net flux through a closed surface um, of electric field is equal to some constant times the charge enclosed. So the moment that they tell me some charge is gonna be enclosed here, that's all I need to know. The flux here will go up according to that amount of char net charge enclosed. 
So uh, the electric flux through the spherical surface will become uh, negative. Okay, that's the opposite of what this is saying. So no, when a charge is placed at the marked location, we must wait a long time. Um, probably not. Let me just read it through the rest. If uh, a negative charge is placed on positive, yeah. So this is the nonsense thing because really Gauss's law has no exceptions. Um, whatever happens in between here doesn't matter. Additional charge there, more electric flux. So yeah, become positive. That is the answer. All right, and let me check time. Six minutes. Okay, I think we are doing okay. Uh, the six question. Uh, six minutes. Maybe that's not enough. <laughs> let me check. Uh, which of the following was to correctly describe net electric flux through a closed surface? Okay, Gauss's law still. So uh, it is non-zero for a. Uh, it is a zero if it's dipole. It net contains a net zero charge. Uh, Non-zero if and only if is no. It might not be uniform. Uh, now this is necessary to find the electric field, but different. Oops, I didn't mean to say like that. Um, it's non-zero if the net charge is uh, yeah zero if and only if the net charge inside is zero. Yeah, that is the uh, result from Gauss's law. Natural electric field that. Uh, so, yeah, this is not right, because dipole is actually an example where it is zero and electric field is not zero. Um, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, which of the equations below correctly state? I shouldn't have erased it. Uh, so let me just look through it. Okay, that. Hey, that looks right. Okay, that is right. <laughs> so, um, so you know, you'll see two versions of Gauss's law that I write down. Uh, most of the lectures you see, I will be using actually this version, the version with permittivity of free space. Um, the, there's another version with the uh, uh, Coulomb's constant, but this factor of four pi is in the wrong place for that. Okay. Consider a uniform spherical shell of charge. So the statements below most correctly describes the potential field inside the shell. Okay, uniform spherical shell. Oh, I think I remember that example working out Gauss's law. Inside the shell, electric field is zero. You can prove that using Gauss's law. Um, so which means I can rule out this. I can rule out this. So it's a between these two. And here's the tricky part, the electric potential um, so if you define infinitely far away as being zero, then uh, th there has been electric potential increase as you approach the shell, and that potential just remains constant inside the shell. So it's only the electric field that's a zero, not both. Um, yeah. Right. A little over three minutes. Um, okay. Question eight. The voltage is closely related to two other important physical quantities. Just a Correct to when voltage below K. Uh, yeah, watch out for something like this. Lowercase v is the not voltage but speed. M v squared over R for centripetal force, which has nothing to do with this. Uh, this looks like the definition of voltage. Okay, I'm gonna choose that and double check. Yeah, this will give you the electric force, not voltage. And this is another misuse of V. As, you know, this, this would have been correct for kinetic energy if it were speed V, not voltage V. Um, electric world. It's a device. Yeah, you saw this in, as a demo uh, in the lab two weeks ago, I think, right? Um, and when it is electrically charged, it begins to spin uh, yeah, clockwise, as seen from top. Choose a symbol which most why it spins. I think I explained that in the lab, which is basically there's a corona discharge from the tip, which pushes the thing in the opposite direction from the discharge direction. So that would be the reaction force. Um, the electrons that are being pushed out is pushing this thing um, the other way. Electrons or ions. I've seen this work with both kind of polarity. So I think it, it's not necessarily electrons. It could be ions or something. Reaction force is the right one. Um, okay, let me see how much time I have. Two minutes, okay. I think these questions feel easier. Maybe uh, they might be more conceptually tricky than case I didn't come across any calculation. Well, there might be some questions that does do require calculation, but probably not too many. Um, so parallel plate capacitor is model this that 
separated by distance, the, the uh, let me just draw the picture. Uh, so I have parallel plate capacitor of some area. There's some charge plus Q on one side, minus Q on the other, and voltage difference, and it should be like zero volt here, delta V here. Uh, consider the capacitance, which characterizes capacitor, and to some, yeah. And there's a formula for capacitance, um, which I only have it memorized in this form. <laughs> so I could have rewrite epsilon naught in terms of the other constant, I think. Um, so that's the formula for parallel plate capacitance that's been derived. So, uh, choose the same below which most correctly describes this capacitance. Uh, capacitance depends on different parameters. Okay, so this is actually one that uh, shows that dependence. So capacitance doesn't change with the amount of charge or voltage. So capacitance increases when area increases. That's the one. Let's just double check the rest. Yeah, conductivity of the material doesn't have big impact. Uh, if distance the increases, then capacitance would decrease. Yeah, right. I think that's right. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, it. Um, so those are 10 of the questions in the question pool. Uh, let me just make sure I answer them all. Like with, oh, maybe I'll just let the time run out. Uh, like with the thermodynamics, um, there's a question pool, and there's a, um, so your 10 questions might, probably won't be these 10 questions. And uh, you, you have three attempts really because 10 minutes is not a lot of time. You So you have three attempts. And uh, the system takes the best of the three attempts. So if I retake this, then no matter what I get, the score I end up with will be 10. Um, and I guess since I got everything right, I know all those answers here are correct. Um, now, if you missed any of the questions, um, so the system won't show you until the after the due date uh, which of the questions you missed. Uh, one, which questions you missed, and two, what the correct answer is for those. Um, Real quick, uh, Professor, yeah. could you go to question six? I saw one of the one of the options. I couldn't tell what was wrong with the on the third choice. Yeah, so let me write down Gauss's law. Um, the Gauss's law that you will see me write down in any of my new lectures, it, uh, uh, I write it down this way. Uh, the Net electric flux through a closed surface is equal to 4 pi times Coulomb constant times the charge enclosed. And uh, to convert between the, the version of the formulas using Coulomb constant or permittivity, let me write this out, permittivity of free space. That's the old-fashioned term. I think if you are using Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Alpha will understand something called electric constant. And that's in reference to that epsilon naught, not Coulomb's constant. Um, the way to convert between these two is this identity or definition that uh, the Coulomb's constant is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So this is the version that I recommend that you have memorized. <laughs> and so using that, so 4 pi over there, so 4 pi k epsilon naught is 1 over epsilon naught. So that should be q and closed over epsilon naught. Yeah, so comparing this, so this version is what I picked. And the others, you know, they are subtly <laughs> wrong. <laughs> here, 4 pi is in the wrong place. Here, it's missing the 4 pi that it should have. And here, uh, if this had been epsilon naught, it would have been right. Um, so, so I don't often ask memorization question. This is one of those. It's a memorization question. And uh, if you're not 100% sure what you memorized, then first, you should skip it. And once you know you have enough time, two or three minutes, uh, look it up in the textbook. So um, uh, that uh, like you can use your textbook. It's open book. So, yeah. yeah, I think I saw the thumb. Um, OK, so that's uh, the free form. Uh, not free form. Multiple choice. Uh, timed assessment. Um, let me. Yeah. So let me do the uh, the free form question. I think that the time we have remaining is probably the 
right amount of time. Um, so the, it's time limited for 20 minutes. And I will tell you that even for me again, that 20 minutes time limit, it's a really tight amount of time. I myself wouldn't waste a lot of time uh, if uh, like while I'm answering. Uh, especially for physics for B. Uh, sometimes, you know, with the physics for A, some of the questions are easy enough that I can kind of wa waste the time explaining things. Um, here, depending on what question I get, I might need to work through pretty quickly. So yeah, um, uh, I don't think I have done any of these questions on video, so I think it, uh, so whatever question I get, I'll work through it, and we'll see where we stand time-wise after I'm done working through this one that I'll get. Uh, there's like uh, 10 questions in the pool, so some of you will get lucky and get the same question that I'm working on now. <laughs> but uh, you have only one attempt, so if you don't, didn't get lucky, just do your best with the question you got. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so this is a capacitance capacitor question, but there's a whole bunch you have to work through. Like, uh, uh, yeah, so <laughs> let me just read it and go through it slowly. So coaxial cable, they have nice picture here, uh, is inner conductor of some radius R1 uh, surrounded by an outer conductor of radius R2. Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, radius R2, and I think this lowercase r is a variable. Yeah. Can be analyzed as a capacitor by considering the picture similar to below. Uh, R1 is the radius, yeah, okay, just <laughs> did that. Um, also, the space between is vacuum, okay, or air, it's similar to vacuum. Um, okay, so we'll use this for Coulomb constant. I think I can still use this. Uh, if it's comparing numerical values, it'll um, it'll, um, uh, it has 1% tolerance, so this will be fine. Um, okay, so if the voltage of the outer conductor is 0 volt, grounded, okay. So let me just start uh, writing down some stuff. So if we add R2 is equal to 0, and the inner conductor is maintained at this voltage, oh, uh, so if we add R, R1 is equal to V0, uh, give an expression for the electric field between inner and outer conductor as a function of distance R from the center. Oh, oh that's a, a little harder than I think uh, <laughs> my first thought. So um, I think I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut because there's additional steps after remembering the expression for electric field. So you have this formula for electric field of infinite line. That's something that was derived in lecture in the textbook. You can use it with the proper reference. So I'm going to uh, cite my own <laughs> memorized knowledge <laughs> and say um, the electric field due to an infinite line of some linear charge density lambda is a two times Coulomb constant times linear charge density lambda divided by R. So what's uh, important here is that, um, and, and using this directly will be really challenging because I'm not given anything that gives me linear charge density. But what I can take away from this is that electric field of an infinite line of charge which what this will end up looking like in the space between R1 and R2, is going to be some reference value in out um, times some reference radius R0 <laughs> divided by R. I'm just trying to make sure my units are correct. Units of this will cancel out. So R0 is the reference um, reference the distance where my electric field is will be the value E naught. So, um, so this is what I'm going to start out with. This is my expression for the electric field in between. And this is basically the parameters that I don't know. So let's see. I could say, okay, so with the formula, electric field at the distance um, R1 will be something that I don't know, but E naught times R naught over R1. And 
electric field at the distance r2 will be again e naught times r naught over r2. Okay, that doesn't seem all that helpful. Uh, I look back at the information I've been given. Oh, I was given voltage information, which neither of these algebraic expressions don't let me use. Looks like what I'll, in order to use this uh, voltage information, delta V that we are given, um, we have to write down an expression for delta V. So the expression for delta V is going from, uh, let me just use the symbols we have here. Uh, let me make delta V positive. So we'll imagine going from the radi big radius R2 to the small radius R1. That's defined as this integral from R2 to R1 minus the electric field as a function of R, the radius, uh, that product with the, the line element that you are integrating over. So here, dr. And so I'm imagining this picture here. Uh, I'm imagining taking a point um, starting from a, a starting from let's say a point here at R two, and then taking my dr to be that. Um, so in go dr going in that direction to R one. So so yeah, and I think there's a bit of a um, about whether to introduce a, a negative sign here. I don't think I need to. Let me just uh, write it out without an extra negative sign. And uh, somehow, if I have a sign error, I'll just uh, make sure the final answer is correct. <laughs> so, um, this, so this uh, voltage difference will be free naught. That's the one piece of information given in the uh, question. That's what we are trying to use. Free naught is uh, integral from R2 to R1 minus the expression for electric field. I guess we'll go back and use this one. So um, E naught times R naught divided by R. And uh, this that product, you know, it's anti-parallel or, or parallel. So there won't be any cosine of theta. I don't have to worry about that. It's going to be along the uh, direction dr. And I'm not introducing additional minus sign because I think this uh, order of integration takes care of that. We'll see if I'm right about that. So uh, looking at this, let me factor out everything that doesn't depend on R. So I factor out minus E naught R naught. I'm integrating from R, R equals R2 to R1, 1 over R dr. You have to just remember this integral, the antiderivative of this thing. Um, or, so the integral of 1 over R dr is the natural log of R. That's the antiderivative of 1 over r. So we do that, memorize the integral formula. What I can write is minus e naught times r naught. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So something about the units confused me. Um, yeah, yeah. So I have the natural log of r evaluated from uh, r2 to r1. So still minus e naught, r naught times. And when I plug this in, it's upper limit natural log of r1 minus the natural log of r2. And this is why the units were confusing me. Because <laughs> uh, like, what's the natural log of a meter? Turns out I don't have to worry about that because I, with the logarithm algebra, I can rewrite this as, rewrite this as natural log of R1 divided by R2. So all the units cancel out, this gives me a unitless quantity, which I think all works out. So, so yeah, this is the answer I end up with. The V naught, the voltage that's given, that's equal to minus E naught R naught times natural log of R1 R2. Let me do last bit of uh, rewriting. I can absorb this minus sign into the natural log. Um, the, the the natural log algebra says that um, when you have uh, multiplicate factors in front, they can be inside the natural log as the power of the argument. So I just take the reciprocal of that to bring the this minus sign in. And with that, I have E naught R naught times 
natural log of R2 over R1. And you can see every quantity here is positive. Um, R2 over R1 is greater than 1, so natural log of that is positive. So what this expression is, what this exercise has given us is a way to write out E0 and R0 in terms of known quantities. So I guess we can't really separate these two, but I think it finds just one constant factor. So we can say uh, E0, R0 is equal to phi naught over natural log of R2 over R1. And we'll use this expression for this uh, expression for the electric field way up there. So what we can say is um, our electric field as a function of R is this co uh, coefficient, phi naught divided by natural log of R2 over R1 divided by R. So let's see. It says, uh, given expression for the electric field between the, uh, yeah, yeah, so that would be the expression. Phi naught divided by uh, natural log of R2 over R1. I'm using um, underscores to do the, the, the subscript things. You can also use a variable keys from here. Um, so all of that divided by R. Okay, that, uh, let me let that be. Um, I guess this might, some portion of this might be auto-graded. So on this question, this is what I would recommend. Oh, I have nine minutes. So if you find yourself running out of time and not able to calculate all this out, make sure you put something in here so that I know, so have some indication of what you are able to work out within the time limit. This is like your free form answer kind of thing. Uh, so, okay. Uh, voltage of the inner conductor maintained at that given expression for uh, Ali. Oh, oh, so this is where I can actually work back, use some of the things I wrote down. So I wrote this down. I think that's going to be useful because now that I have an expression for electric field, I can use that for the left hand side and actually solve for the right hand side here uh, for lambda. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, using all the time of part A was not a mistake, apparently. So phi naught over natural log of R2 over R1 over small, lowercase r is equal to 2 times Coulomb constant times lambda over R. So some things cancel out, like uh, all the uh, kind of variable dynamical quantities. 1 over R cancels out. I guess that's it. And I just move the 2ke over. Uh, in terms of okay, I hope it. Uh, I think it will accept both uh, Coulomb and uh, permittivity of uh, free space because I programmed them both. So let me write out the solve the version of lambda. If you necessary, you can um, kind of slow down and make sure I didn't make algebra mistake. Lambda is equal to v naught divided by two k e times v naught. Uh, let me. Oh, wait, 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 we not cancel out? No, lambda, sorry, I went too fast. Lambda is equal to phi naught divided by 2k, and then continue to divide by this natural log of R2 divided by R1. Okay, so that's the answer for lambda. Phi uh, naught divided by uh, 2 times ke times natural log of R2 divided by R1. Um, so what is the capacitance per unit length of this coaxial cable? OK. Oh, you know what? I think A and B is helping me answer that, because we have a definition of capacitance. Capacitance is defined as a voltage, voltage, no, sorry, been a while, uh, charge. It's capacity to store charge, charge per voltage. Now, with an infinitely long thing, it's going to be infinity all the way around. So that's why it's asking capacitance per length. So what you have to do, work with the charge per length. So what we are really working with is lambda divided by V. And I have both. I have lambda there, and it's already in terms of that V naught. So let me just write it out. Um, so or, well, let me be careful. V0 divided by 2ke natural log of 
R2 over R1 times 1 over V, 1 over V naught. So V naught cancel out. And what I have for on the expression for capacitance per length is 1 over 2 times Coulomb constant times natural log of R2 over R1. And uh, yeah, I think the units actually work out. They gave you the unit of, um, yeah, unit of um, 2 ke. Sorry, let me finish writing this now. R2 R1. They gave you the unit of Coulomb constant way up there, and the unit we gave was meter per farad. So if that's in the uh, denominator, then the unit of this uh, entire thing, the natural log doesn't have any units. This is, uh, um, so meter per farad, reciprocal farad per meter. And that's exactly the unit you expect, capacitance per unit length to be farad per meter. So, so okay, in part two, I think that's just uh, plugging the numbers for the, all the answers I've derived. So let's just do that. I got um, expression one over, uh, let me de declare some of my variables. Variables um, R2 and R1. Um, do I need anything else? Oh, uh, I need L. I'll explain it a bit. So I have uh, my expression for capacitance per length. 1 divided by 2 times Coulomb constant, I already plugged in the number, times natural log of uh, R2 divided by R1. Now, the question isn't asking for capacitance per length. It's asking for capacitance of the cable and gave us the length of the cable. So what I have to do is take this, uh, multiply by uh, four meters or L that I'm gonna plug into the four meters. So I got that symbolic expression and I can plug in all the numbers. Substitute in L is equal to um, four meters. That's already basic SI unit, R1. It's given as 0 0.4 millimeter. So I can put in 0 0.4 millimeters, 10 to the minus three meters. So 10 to the power of minus three meter. R2 is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 3 meter. So, okay, that should be right. So the answer, I guess, is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 10. Oh, they are want the answer in picofarad. Um, pico, I think that's the 10 to the minus 12. So if I take this and divide by 1 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 12, yeah, minus 9 is nano, so this is pico. They should give me the answer in picofarads, 160.5 picofarads. So if you were able to work out everything, uh, you don't really need anything here. Um, this is really there in case, because uh, you saw as I was working through how basically everything depended on me working out A and the rest kind of followed through fairly easily. So if you're somehow got stuck while answering A, uh, I want you to still be able to show what you are able to work out. So uh, if you see yourself running out of time, this is where you would want to describe what you worked out so far. Because the work that you will add, I always look at it as, um, so the answers that were uh, submitted is what you were able to finish within the 20 minute time limit. And the work, I do love to say, that, you know, sometimes the system will grade um, either correct answers as wrong or, you know, mostly correct answers, answers as wrong because that's how it works. And all this is manually reviewed when I get to it. <laughs> so, uh, so the work that you submit helps me see where you should actually get full credit, even if the system says it was wrong. Um, so you, know, you should not take to work. But that work is always seen as this is what was done after the time ran out. So uh, in terms of getting full acknowledgement for everything that was done within the time limit, you should have something that was submitted within the time limit. And that's what the free form entry box is for. So that, um, you know, you don't have to put what you know to be nonsense answer into a non-free form box. So, 
So I guess for this question, really the free form portion is the work here somewhere. Because I think the way it's programmed in, these are gonna be checked to see if they were correct. I'll get some kind of score, we'll see. Uh, yeah, all right, that's everything. Let me do submit and end. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I let I let the time run out on the other one, so I think I'm gonna just submit this and end. Did they tell me the score? Not yet. Uh, all right, that seems good. I think that means I got everything actually. Let's see. Did they tell me what I got right and wrong? They don't. Um, <laughs> uh, let me check this. So, uh, you know, so I'm going to go into instructor view so that I can show you what I know you can access until after the due date and until after I type in the stuff that I need to type. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, I got everything. Well, yeah, and I think it gave me only 80% because, uh, you know, <laughs> it gave, gives automatic zero for this part. <laughs> yeah, the other answers are right. Um, yeah, and they, they it's programmed so that it accepts uh, all those different forms of answers. So so yeah, and, you know. So okay, if you got lucky and you got this question, then yes, you know the answers. But really, what I want to see is your work, uh, your derivation steps, and uh, with a free form, uh, with a free form submissions like this. Um, you know, if uh, you you have every single one of these lines, then I know what I'm saying is not your in your own words, and so it doesn't show your understanding. Uh, you should work to show your understanding. So, so yeah, that, that's it. Um, so there are like ten other questions here, and uh, the system will, will uh, uh, random number generator and give you one of those ten questions. Um, so. So yeah, and you can always add work. And what I will say is that, because uh, sometimes, you know, people use a score as an indicator of, oh, I got something wrong. What do I need to find and fix? Uh, what I will say is, um, so you do have, you should take extra time to organize your work and correct any mistakes you see. And, you know, take some time to review it and see if, uh, did you uh, miss any mistake that you might have missed in that 20 minute time limit. Do look for that. I don't want to discourage that. But don't focus so much on the actual score itself. Because uh, so with this 80% score, I got 80% because this is not graded. <laughs> so it would have been a mistake for me to uh, get obsessed with that. One, two, sometimes there are mistakes in the question. <laughs> How the answers are programmed in. So it's all manually reviewed. So the answers were not super thoroughly checked. Um, so, so you should take time to organize your work and uh, clarify anything, correct any mistakes you do see, but don't see the, the score itself as an indicator that there's something wrong. Uh, there might not be, or you know, there might be, but <laughs> in the end, it's a human grade of grading it. So whatever minor mistakes there might be, uh, I know how to take it all into account the way my open math system simply can't. So, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you want to add work, you wouldn't go there. You would go click on the add work button that actually lets you change this. Yeah. All right. And uh, I think that's uh, it. We do that last bit of explanation. I think I used all the time. Um, I don't know if I want to do the... You know, let me. it doesn't take that long of a time, and I have two more attempts. So let me just see how quickly I can do this if I um, just don't talk and don't explain anything. I got this question before. Um. By the way, this is an ADA feature. Uh, it probably won't save you any time. Second most positive. 
think it's this one. Yeah, it goes as plus k. Uh, by the way, this is randomly generated. Yours might not be second most. So <laughs> watch out for that. Uh. Tangent to the direction of, yeah, that'll give you a zero in the dot product. Oh, there's a mistake here. It loses kinetic energy, or this should be swapped. It should be from negatively charged to positively. Uh, I'll fix that after. Oh. <laughs> uh, they are swapped, I'll fix that. Um, oh, um, yeah. So there's two versions of this question. The second one I didn't program in it. This one I programmed it. It's, it's actually super easy. It comes down to voltage is a scalar. So I've got plus Q, plus Q, minus 2Q, same distance. Voltage is there, going to add up to zero. Like electric field version, I thought about programming it, and I didn't because it was going to be okay. equal magnitude and opposite sign. Okay, that's a dipole. So I'm looking for dipole distribution. Uh, these arrows are wrong. Uh, that looks right. This is again an uh, AD feature. People who have accommodation for that should have extra time so that they can actually hear this instead of being able to see the figure. Inversely, no, it's proportional to. Yeah, so it can be calculated this way. That is correct, even though uh, it doesn't actually depend on Q or B. Because these two, they depend on each other linearly. All right, how much time did I use? All right, a little under half. Yeah, I think that, <laughs> I mean, first to make sure I answer all the questions, 10, okay. So I think I got them all right. Uh, let me just submit it end here. And then I'm going to send myself a message. And <laughs> good. Uh, Positively charged and negatively charged are swapped. Because the electrode is pushed away from negatively charged electrode and yeah. Alright, so so I'm gonna fix that outside of this recorded session. <laughs> but there are any questions? Um let me know. If there are no other questions, then I think that's all. Um, so next week's session, we'll hold it on Wednesday. I'll send out the exact time uh, at the beginning of the week, I guess. Uh.